Okay, everybody, I want to give you guys an update. Uh, just give you a quick little look here. Uh, I've got two trees over here. One's marked right there with the, uh, the candy cane around that tree. Between that tree and this tree over here that's marked, if you can see it, right over here in the middle is my property stake underneath the snow, obviously. Now, I own 413 yards going that way. 413 yards going that way. I own 1,219 feet on the back side, and then 1,519 feet on that side right there. So we are at the northeast corner of the property, which is between these two trees right over here in the center. And basically, we're looking down the southern half of it right here. So I go that way, that way, that way, and then right back here. So, but I want to go ahead and give you a cabin update, what I've been doing. All this cleared area that you see right here, this has already been cleared by me uh, last couple of visits that I was here, and I made a couple huge brush piles, and actually they're under a couple of these large snow piles that you see. I do want to uh, let you know that we are currently about four feet off the ground right now on the snowpack. Um, I've been taking down these trees right here, and I'm going to take down a few more of those ones on the back side there. And right over there, I'm going to be taking out a bunch of trees. Basically, I just want a big square on the northeast corner of this property to let the sun in for solar panels and a future garden, etc., etc. But more than anything, I just want the sun to come in here and um, kind of dry out the property a little bit more. So, while I've been here for the last month and uh, five, six days, whatever it is, I've been obviously harvesting a bunch of trees that you see cut down over in there and I did a whole bunch over here on this side. Um, as you can see there's the wood pile right there that I've been stacking and amassing all this tree right there. But this right here last year was about a 14 foot pile of debris and like I said once again we're still four feet above the ground and obviously it's mulched down a whole bunch. And then this is all the new stuff that I've done since I've been here. And all this stuff you see over here is sawdust where I've obviously been doing a bunch of sawing. Uh, so, I've been taking out these trees right here. I'm just going to take out a few more back over in here. Uh, these big trees you see are cottonwoods. I am not cutting those down at all. Those are the oldest uh, trees in the forest here. They're the sentinels. I'm going to leave them be. And basically, they're, they kind of ring my property. I'm going to clear out over into there a little bit more um, on the back side of the cabin and then straight down that side. And basically, that's all I'm going to be clearing. Uh, now, these trees right here that you see closest to the cabin, they're going to stay. but. This is the southern portion of the sky right here, and it's really important to let the sun through, obviously. So by taking out these trees, the sun rises over here in the morning, and as soon as it arcs over those trees, I'm getting all this sun that you can see, so this was a really smart decision to go ahead and take those out. Um, one thing I do want to show you real quick, let me march back here for a second. Uh, this tree right here I was not going to turn into firewood at all. I'm using this tree to mill with and I'm milling boards off of it and I'm going to make a table and a kitchen work surface and as you can see I've already started right down there and uh, what you have to do is you have to make this brace right here and this brace rides on top of the tree and then I have a sawmill that attaches to my chainsaw and that's how I'm able to cut flat boards and eventually turn them into lumber. So this whole tree right here is going to be nothing but furniture in the cabin within the next couple of days. So, and I'll show you the first board that I milled off of it. Trek back to the cabin over here. And yes, I do have snowshoes on. Uh, we're getting to that time of year where you're during the middle of the day, this snow softens up and you just fall through everywhere you go. So 
Oh, there's the little old cabin. Not much to look at, but it is mine, plus the 40 acres that I'm on. I'll take it. There's my wood pile again. Let me go ahead and give you guys a side view of just how much wood this truly is. Because let me tell you, it has been an absolute chore. But that's how many rows we're looking at. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got eight rows, and I believe a cord of wood is four by four by eight. I haven't exactly measured the cordage, and i be honest with you, I really don't care to. I just know that I've got a ton more trees to take out, and I want to get them all basically to a centralized location right over here. So I can set up the log splitter, and start splitting them, and then finally stacking them over here. Now, under these two big snow piles that you see right here is a ton of rotted wood left by the previous owner. Once this snow melts, all this wood under here has to be brought out to that pile and burned. So that's coming, but I have to wait for the snow to melt, obviously. So bear with me one second while I take these snowshoes off, walk inside, give you the grand tour. Trust me, it won't take long. So about two days ago, th excuse me, two days ago, yeah, I finally went ahead and cleared off four feet of snow from this entire um, porch. I did cut, this was my initial trail in right here, and it came to right here to the door, and this was the opening, and on both sides of me I had four feet of snow. I finally got tired of looking at it, got it off the, um, the porch. So this is the first board that I've milled, guys. I'm cutting them in two inches. I want thick boards. They are going to shrink up just a tad, but I'm kind of proud of my first little board there. Alright, let's go inside. Okay, as soon as we enter, it's alright, it gets dark and I have to adjust here. We come into my little tool storage area, and I've got all my stuff in here that I basically need. Obviously, I'm going to be bringing a lot more. This is just basic stuff in which to get me up and running with. Something breaks down, obviously I have certain tool sets to take care of it, and rope, and chains, and things of that nature. Now, in this little room right here, once again, let the camera adjust, is a bunk bed. One top, two on the bottom, and right now I'm basically just using it as a storage shed uh, for my stuff. I've got some clothes hanging up in here. Uh, I do have all my uh, dehydrated food down here on the floor. floor. That's for extremely long-term storage. Probably never use it. But if shit hits the fan and if I can get up here, at least I can stay alive for a couple of months or whatever. So anyway, I'm not one of those preppers, guys. It's just one of those things that's better to have it than not. So coming in here... Uh, the first thing I'm going to build is a kitchen work surface right over here. It's going to be an 8 foot long table, about 36 inches wide I believe, and that's going to be my kitchen prep area. And let's see, I don't know why I'm showing you what's in the cupboards, but nevertheless, this is all the stuff that I've managed to bring up here so far. Dishes, towels, just general stuff to kind of keep you going and, and living. And I've already been here for a month and a half, so this was just absolutely crammed with food, etc., etc. And um, that's basically about it. There. I've got a couple all of my lodge pans over here. They cook great. Um, here's the ye old fireplace. That thing has kept me extremely warm. Uh, I'm very thankful for it. It was here when I showed up to the cabin. So that was an absolute blessing. I'll take it. And then over here, that's where I spend basically the majority of my days uh, whenever I'm inside the cabin, um, writing in my journal, etc., etc. And um, let's see. 
brought my axe collection up here. I strung all those, refinished the axe heads, put new handles on them, got all that taken care of. So they are usable, they're not just for decoration, but I haven't had to use them yet because I have huge chainsaws. So I'd rather use a chainsaw, but if the chainsaws go out or I run out of gas, yes, I have a backup plan. <laughs> Let's climb up into the loft. Okay, hopefully the camera transitions up into here very well. I just hung that up the other day. I've been living out of totes. I got tired of that, so I hung up a uh, string and put all my uh, clothes on that. Uh, I've got an air mattress here. And um, it's insulated up here, and it is extremely warm every night. So this is the, uh, the living area. Uh, I do have plans up here for, to build some more furniture, so it's coming. Now that I've got the mill up and running and operational, life should be a lot better. That's always a good thing. Okay, so not really much to see, guys. It just it is what it is. Um, that's the whole show. Well, thanks for coming along with me on the tour, and probably the next time I do an inside filming, there will be a kitchen work surface over here, and that will not look like Sanford and Son. So, hope you guys join me for the next video. Thank you very much.